morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I invite you to stand as you are able for the words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Go to Christ in seeking God's abundance. Let us confess our sin. God our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Gathering him is number 676.
God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us, and with your spirit accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the bread, who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Perhaps 
Red is a weakness for you. The crowds following Jesus had a weakness for bread. Remember from last week? After Jesus fed the crowd of 5,000, they wanted to force him to be their king so that he could give them free bread forever. This week, the crowds go after Jesus to get some more of that wonderful bread. They wanted Jesus to give them more of that bread. Fill us up, Jesus. We don't want to go hungry again. Now, anytime we talk about bread in the church, most of us jump right into thinking about communion. And that's a perfectly good way to think about it. But the people to whom Jesus spoke these words, the crowds, they didn't think of it that way. All they could see was the abundance of barley loaves that they got on that hillside. So Jesus tells them that the bread that he will give them is food that endures for eternal life. And they ask him, what kind of work do we have to do to get this kind of food? Jesus tells them, it's really simple. They just have to believe in him. And they say, okay, what sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? We remember Moses. He gave our ancestors bread in the wilderness. What about you? What good thing are you going to do for us? See, the people just didn't understand. They demanded proof, signs, wonders. They wanted something concrete, and then they would believe. And by the way, Jesus, a never-ending supply of bread would be really nice. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He reminds the crowd that Moses was not the one who worked the miracle in the desert. In the desert. It was God. And the bread that God is now sending down from heaven is not like manna. It's not like a tasty collar or even a nice Jewish rye. It's a living bread, a bread that has come down to save the world and give the world life. And so the crowd says, great, give us this bread always. But they are still thinking about pita and sandwich bones. So Jesus makes himself very clear. I am the bread of life. It is not the barley loaves, it's me. I am the bread of life. If you believe in me, you will never be hungry. Oh, no biscuits, just you. Yep, just me. So let's go back to that thing about talking about bread in church, you know, Holy Communion. Because even though the crowds and the disciples didn't get it, this is precisely what Jesus was talking about. His body and blood, the bread, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, food given to feed a people hungry for life. But unfortunately, all too many of us in the church have turned Jesus' invitation into works that we have to do. Communion becomes contingent on whether we are worthy, or whether we feel special, or whether we've done enough to come to Jesus, or whether we've reached a certain age, whether we somehow know enough to believe. But Jesus says that it is the work of God in us that causes us to believe in Jesus. Faith, and I've said this a thousand times before and I will say it again, faith is a work of God in us. It is not something we get or do on our own. You cannot wake up one morning and decide all on your own. I think that today I'm going to give that believing in Jesus thing a try. It is God's work. It is a gift given to us in baptism by God. This means that everyone is welcome at the table. There are no requirements of understanding or lengthy confessions of sin required. There are no age requirements, no confirmation requirements, no articulation requirements. Jesus simply feeds the crowds and then teaches them that he is the bread of life, the true bread which gives life to the world. And then he invites everyone to come and receive the living bread, regardless of any outward preparation or knowledge or age or ability to understand. 
You see, the action in the sacraments is all one-sided. All of the action comes from God. God washes, God forgives, and God feeds. Luther makes this point pretty clear in the large catechism when he talks about infant baptism. The reason we baptize babies is to show clearly that the gift of faith and the forgiveness of sin, the forgiveness of sin, is God's work and not ours. We don't wait for people to come to Christ or to decide for Jesus or to be old enough to understand what's going on. Instead, we take a helpless baby and baptize her, showing her and everyone else that God gives the entire kingdom of God to someone who cannot even begin to understand it. Now, baptism is about God giving God's entire kingdom to someone who can neither comprehend it nor deserve it. <coughs> Holy Communion is pretty much the same. The body and blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and strength for life's journey, all given to people who struggle to understand how that little round flat wafer is even bread let alone the body of Christ. And yet, some of us want to say that we can only receive it or deserve it because we somehow know enough about it. My friends, the sacrament is a mystery, not in the sense of a whodunit to be figured out, but in the sense of something that can only be received in faith, in the faith that is a gift from God, a gift given in baptism. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the one who gives us life, life in our baptism and life in the Holy Supper. Unlike the crowds, we know that this meal is not about a physical lunch. It's a spiritual banquet, the place where our Lord gives himself to feed us. When he comes down from heaven, right now to be in the bread and wine, really and truly, where he comes to make sure that no one goes away hungry. Where he, offers that, where he offers to feed everyone who comes to him. This bread and wine does not just represent Jesus, it really is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Come to me and never be hungry. So come, taste the bread of life, the true bread which comes down from heaven. Taste the bread of life which is given for you
together in trust and hope, let us confess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died on his birth, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of you. O wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experience the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority, that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, bread of life from heaven. <clears throat> You feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O wisdom of truth, <clears throat> help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found in every step. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those in any need, especially those who call the church for help. Surround them with your love and peace and stir up in us a passion to do all we can to make their lives better. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints and unpardoned. Bring your beloved into eternal glory opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with your neighbors as you feel comfortable.
everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. Thank you. 
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished, nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congregation, may be seated for the announcements. Welcome. It's a delight to be worshiping in God's house with you this morning. Thank you all for participating. And please join us after worship for coffee hour and fellowship back in the parish hall. And thank you, Laura, for the treats for um, coffee hour. If anybody would like to sign up for coffee hour um, refreshments, to bring refreshments, there's a pad in the back of the church to sign up. Um, and if you're not receiving our newsletter and you would like to receive our weekly newsletter, um, just fill out a connection card that's in the pew uh, with your name and your email. And you can know all about what's going on at Atonement. Um, and let's see, later today, um, Don and I are going to be participating in a dunk tank fundraiser for backpacks and school supplies for the children of Asbury Park at, <clears throat> at Georgie's in Asbury Park. Uh, it starts at three with other people uh, that are in Asbury Park that are also participating in the fundraiser, but Don and I will be dumped supposedly around 6 and 6.15 and um, come out and enjoy the fun. Some people were having a lot of fun last year dunking me quite <laughs> often. I'm not going to mention any names, but it was great fun. Why can't um, you do it at 11.30? Yeah, I, I don't know. Because I would be the first one in line. <laughs> like to um, contribute or donate to the backpack drive, it's in our newsletter how to do that. Um, and let's see, what else is coming up? Um, on Wednesday, um, the 7th at 6 p.m. is Conversation on the Lawn with Pastor Michael. He always has an interesting um, question for us to ponder and chat about. And then a week from today, on the 11th, on Sunday, the 11th, starting at 7.30, we'll be making breakfast sandwiches uh, for the neighborhood. So if you'd like to come out and participate um, in cooking and prepping, we start at 7.30, but then serving from 8 to 9.30. So come and prep or eat and um, Meet the neighbors. And then also on the 14th is food pantry. We're always accepting food pantry donations in our basket out in the foyer here, um, along with our Bishop's Challenge, which is um, we are collecting plastic film. And we have collected 36 pounds so far. And we're going for a thousand pounds, and then we hopefully will receive a free Trex bench made out of that compressed plastic. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, last week, Diane Armstrong was here giving out her homegrown cucumbers, and Nancy took quite a few home and made them into pickles. And she has pickles for everybody that would light them in the back of the church in little containers on the little white table. So just look down when you walk out and uh, you'll see them. I think there's different kinds of pickles. Let's see. Two kinds. Okay. Yes. Two kinds. Um, anything else from anybody? Happy birthday to Charlie, his birthday is 
the second. And happy birthday to Stu. His birthday is tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, let me sing happy birthday.